So when the narcissist discards you, they need you to behave in a certain way so, so they feel good about themselves. When they discard you, they want to be sure that you're missing out on a good thing, that you're feeling the loss of something tremendous. And they want to see that reaction in you that proves to them that you are indeed feeling this loss, that you are feeling devastated. And they expect you to take certain actions, maybe trying to seek an explanation from them, trying to seek closure, trying to rekindle things. All those things form part of the narrative which the narcissist expects to play out when they discard you. And sometimes even when they ghost you, when it's not a full discard, or when they give you the long, silent treatment, they expect a similar reaction from you. And it's narcissists, some people say, or when they first meet them, will think, oh, they're super confident, very confident. Narcissists are cocky. They're confident, but in an overcompensating way. It's not really genuine. They play this persona of ultra confidence. And what they expect is they really do expect you to behave in that way once they discard you. They really think that they are that much better than you. They really think that you are needy of them, dependent on them. And to be fair, they're often right because they often do manage to make people dependent on them. But they want to see that to fruition when they discard you. They want to see you chase them. They want to feel uplifted because of that. But when the narcissist discards somebody, if they discard you and you move on more quickly than they anticipated or you didn't quite have the devastated response they were expecting, you cause a severe blow to their confidence you cause a severe injury to their ego. You know, even, even if they are with somebody new, even if they have partly moved on to something, something more exciting, the fact that you are not responding the way they expect, all of a sudden those other things going on for them, you know, the greener grass on the other side of the, of, you know, on the other side, the landscape, it's all of a sudden, it doesn't look so appealing anymore because you become this sore thing, this, this thorn that just all of a sudden bothers them because they're becoming injured because their confidence is becoming injured. Their ego is not being stroked. And they start wondering, did, might they have misjudged something? Narcissists, when they take important decisions, when they take big decisions, they usually, in their mind, they think they know what the outcome is going to be. Narcissists like to take decisions when they know what the, the result's going to be. And usually it's something that plays to their favor, usually in the form of stroking their ego, making them feel good about themselves, uplifting them. And they like certainty as, as to the outcome of their actions. It all ties into their, the way that they like to control people and situations and feel good about themselves. But the difficulty is, you know, people are never fully predictable. And because narcissists need to control people to feel good about themselves, they're never really in full control of their own emotions because they're always relying on how other people respond. And they can never fully control that, even though they might be able to control it sometimes with certain people. It's never fully reliable. So if you are somebody who was with a narcissist and they discarded you and they were expecting you to chase them, to seek closure, to seek explanations, to try to win them back and rekindle things and apologize and, you know, promising you'll change your ways to become even a better supply and sacrifice even more, like there was more for you to sacrifice. Because you didn't behave in that way, 
you you really do hurt their ego. And narcissists, they're very fragile. They're very fragile when it comes to people not behaving in certain ways and upsetting them and making them feel insecure and making them feel doubtful and questioning themselves. And that's what you really send through. You know, you really send those hairs running that kind of shiver through their spine where all of a sudden they're thinking, why isn't this working? Why isn't this panning out the way I was expecting? You know, it's almost like they were throwing tests your way. They're trying to throw tests of, of their superiority over you, tests of your dependency on them, tests of your neediness on them. And let's say you pass the tests. Of course, neurosis don't want you to pass the tests. Pass the, passing the test means you're not really falling for it. You're above them. You're above their games. But they like when you get sucked in and, that, and they can have control over you. In other words, they like when you fail their tests. But when you, when you pass the tests and you exceed, you know, you, you overcome these, these kind of hurdles they're throwing your way and these hooks they're trying to throw into you, the fragility of their own ego, the fragility of their confidence really comes to the forefront. They, they really do get shaken up. And it's almost like, in their mind, they have this knee-jerk reaction where they need to restore things. It's not even a really conscious thought, but it's kind of like they can't stay in that vulnerable, shattered position. And that's where they often they'll try to fix things, and that's where often they'll come chasing you. You know, the Hoover, the, the, the promises for better times, convincing you they've changed. They do that because they need to restore, they need to reach a restoration of how things are. They need to feel better about themselves. They need to set the record straight. They need to, you know, they, they need to, to, to balance the playing field in a way that is tilted towards their favor again. And they can usually only really achieve that if they get back into your personal space, if they get back into your good graces. And that often means they have to pretend that they're sorry, pretend they made a mistake, pretend they've had epiphanies. And a lot of times it's pretending isn't really even pretending, but it's more like they actually believe it because they're in such, they, they don't like, narcissists don't like feeling vulnerable. They don't like feeling like they've made a mistake. They don't like being in that doubtful, insecure place very long. It just doesn't sit well with them and their personality. You know, the, the way that their disorder operates means that they can't really live in that shaky place. And that's why they try to set the record straight and get you back in so that they can then, you know, break you down a little bit more, get a bit more control of you before they throw other tests your way. And then when they throw this other test your way, they're going to really make sure you fail. Thanks for watching.